How's it going, Gray Boys? It is week nine, and we are sitting at six and one, number seven in the country, and playing on the road at number 12, Ohio State. The Buckeyes are four and two, so they're having a worse season than us, but honestly, the rankings make them seem really scary. They are the higher overall team with a better offense, but our defense seems to be much more superior so hopefully that uh matchup goes in our favor their two losses on the season aren't all that bad uh the current number six texas on the road and the current number 20 purdue although man that purdue game they got obliterated 13 to 42 that is really rough uh i'm pretty sure that happened uh in real life not too long ago otherwise their wins are you know mediocre not too impressive a five point win against unc uh, but they did a good job beating Illinois, Northwestern, and Miami, but it's Miami of Ohio, so maybe not as impressive as one would expect. Uh, let's just go right into the recruiting. Not a whole lot to do. I think we're just kind of taking a peek to see what is happening, and man, there is something absolutely crazy with Christian Grimmel, the 92 overall center. We are now in the lead. If we go to the top schools, Oklahoma drops 9,545 points in one week. I don't know what the coach of the Sooners said to Christian Grimmel, but he must have said something really bad about the guy's mother because that is the biggest plummet I have ever seen in this game. Now, in all actuality, it's probably just that the Sooners realized that they weren't going to have a chance to pick this guy up. They've already had their visit and a bunch of teams haven't and were gaining on him. So they figured they would just put their points elsewhere. But just goodness, the, the recruiting blunder there to be in the lead with one of the best players in the nation and not be able to finish the job is crazy. Elliot Erdman, I just I'm not confident. Um, we don't have any unlocks yet. We desperately need to level up before week 11. Uh, so I don't know how we're going to do that. We need 5,000 XP or 6,000 XP in a dream so that we can get that extra lockout. But I just don't think that we can gain uh, the right amount on Florida before they have their visit. Uh, we'll try to keep it alive just for now, but this could be just us wasting 700 points. Otherwise, honestly, things look pretty promising around the country. Just need to keep giving points to really good players. Even if we only got these players that we can see on the screen right now, that's a pretty solid recruiting class if your worst player is a 79 overall guard. So we're definitely in a good spot at the moment, but we have to continue to win. And we have uh, some chances for some ranked upsets. We do have number two Auburn playing at number 13 Coastal. So the Teal Boys will have a chance for a big win. Us at number seven playing number 12. And then we have nine and 10 in Florida, Georgia. Uh, just a battle to see who's going to stay in sort of some sort of playoff contention because both teams, one loss, both right at the edge of the top 10. Things could get uh, pretty hairy for the loser of that game, but otherwise we're looking pretty solid. And if there's going to be any losses in the top 25, it's most likely going to be a big upset. Just a quick check in on statistical leaders this year. Maurice State sitting at 35th in the nation with passing yards. Rushing yards wise, it's uh, RJ sitting at 87th. He's just shy of 500. We haven't had a really successful running game most games. Uh, so it's just been hard for him to get consistent yards. Receiving wise, Chris Rutger at 78th with 382. And he picked up over 100 of that last week um, against Penn State. Tackle leaders don't matter, but Napoleon Sandcastle is leading the way which is kind of a surprise to me. Sack leaders, man. Uh, Smith and Whitfield, 14 and 8. Uh, I mean, if Whitfield is going to break last year's sack record for the season, you know that Smith is going to obliterate it. He has a chance maybe to get up to 20 sacks on the season. A couple of big games and he could easily be there. Interception leaders, we're not going to be anywhere on the board because as you guys already know at this point, our players do not hold on to interceptions. So... No chance for that, and I don't know if we have any kicks, uh, so we're just not on the board. Certainly, I don't think we have a single shot to hit a 56-yarder, but enough of that. Let's just go ahead and get into this game on the road once again. I just feel like, for some reason, we've played more uh, away games than home games all season long, so maybe our uh, the back of our season is really backloaded, but I'm not entirely sure. Let's wear white, white, green. This might be a combo that we've worn, but I'm not sure as uh, Ohio State, an 84 overall with an 86 offense and an 83 defense. So they do have the upper hand, but it's not all that big. And, uh, you know, I don't know if I've actually seen the gray wolf uniforms. I like the black 
I like the Grey Wolf, but we're just going to go with the All Red. Uh, it's not a combination I think I've seen either, so we'll put the Buckeyes in that, and hopefully our players will be seeing red and really take their players out. Again, coming into this one, they are okay. They run the ball pretty well. They put up a decent amount of points. We put up more points, but we get fewer yards of total offense, so it's kind of interesting there, but our defense just smothers teams. Uh, their defense, not bad either, but it's not nearly as good. So it's just going to be whoever comes out on top. And they have their top player, their quarterback injured. Not sure if he'll be out just yet, but 89 overall at the QB spot, 89 at the running back, and an 86 overall outside linebacker. So we actually kind of look okay there with Maurice up to an 87 overall. And that injury report, oh my gosh, it's bad news. A center, a corner, and a quarterback all out for this game. And out for quite a while, it seems like. So this Ohio State offense is going to be struggling to keep that number 12 ranking. That's for sure. Let's just see what we can do here. At the shoe, trying to get everything done. Tails never fails. Somehow, every the more enthusiastic I say that, the, the more true it is. And uh, eight mile an hour wins. You know, I'm tempted to just say we'll defend a certain direction right now, but we got to kick it off, get the ball to start the third quarter. And they have us kicking into the wind to start this game, which means into the fourth quarter, we're going to have the wind at our back and they'll be kicking into it, which could make a, a big difference is this, if this is a close one at the end of it all. Again, coming in here, we know that these guys like to run the ball quite a bit, so that's what I'm expecting on this first down we'll see what we can do to stop it if anything and they step back to throw but the pressure coming up the middle is too much for the quarterback taking it under center and he'll have to throw it away it's important to remember that this is the backup qb so he might struggle in some situations where the starter would uh not struggle as yeah i don't know if that was just an inaccurate throw or he was throwing that one away as well but oh for two very quickly just like that, it's going to be a third and 10. We're in the cover six. I don't know if I feel confident. We're going to use Smith here. Try and get pressure on this QB once again. See if we can make him panic. He gets the pass off, and it's Sandcastle getting the stop to force the three and out. Fourth and two, but deep in their own territory. I don't think they go for this. And it is the punt team out on the field. They could fake it. You might want to go for it. Number seven team in the country, and you're missing some really big players. But it is going to be the punter just getting rid of that one. And it's up to RJ Rivera to try and do something with this. The spin move is absolutely deadly. And the juke keeps him alive. Oh, that was a massive 30-yard return. If that's the kind of momentum that we can build early in this game, this one could be a real big blowout. And it's already pretty quiet here in Ohio as we're going to fake the handoff on the read option and have Maurice State slide down for a gain of eight. If we can get our run game going early, I think that can only be good for us. Again, RJ just now breaking 500 rushing yards on the season. Uh, and we're, what, in our eighth game? So that's pretty rough for him. But it puts us into a good spot as we are right on the edge of the red zone looking for a wide receiver mid-screen. We're going to throw it, and it's incomplete. Maurice just missed him. I don't know if it would have been a good one, but it should have gotten some positive yards. Instead, it is now second and 10. And we'll be looking for some good blocking from Fontenot here as RJ Rivera gets the side, cuts it back out to the corner, and he's got a first and goal 18 yards downfield. RJ coming out and showing the agility early in this one. We got Robertson, the fullback, in motion as we will toss this one out to Bentley, and Derek Bentley almost got hit in the backfield for a big loss somehow managed to get back to the line of scrimmage and i don't know why we didn't do, do this the first time let's just give the ball to robertson fullback dive up the middle blocking looks to be good and it's a touchdown very early in this first quarter we've already taken the lead if the defense just keeps playing well this could be bad for the buckeyes i really really liked the first drive from both sides of the ball if the second drive matches up just uh i don't know we might be able to fire up the jets early I wouldn't mind just kind of burning the clock, but we really need XP. We might just bur try to run up the score as much as possible this week. I don't think I can uh, express how important it would be to get that extra coach level up, but 5,000 points is just so much, so we're going to do everything that we can. They're going to step back, looking to pass. The coverage is good, and it's another dropped interception. The Frenchman couldn't hold on that time. It was an okay-looking pass from the backup QB, but uh, just not the wisest spot to throw it as this one's going to be a run and London's there 
to get the stop on second down to make it third and six. I'm fully expecting the pass on this one, but yeah, I'm not going to be too surprised if they run it. It's going to be a slip screen. Can we get there? Smith gets tripped up and tackled, and Sandcastle is able to stand him up for more to finish the job. So another three and out for the defense. It feels like the longer this season goes on, the more that Sandcastle ends up doing for this team. Seeing him get involved a lot more on the defense. This is a very fieldable punt for RJ Rivera. Again, we know what he did last time. <laughs> He's not going to be able to do anything the second time. So again, trying to run up the score a little bit here. We're going to go with uh, a little slip screen to Derek Bentley, who's open and has a couple of blockers, makes a man miss, and Bentley gets 10 yards through the air. Some nifty running coming out of the backfield early in this game could be... I don't know, the, the, the catalyst in allowing us to do really well is the fullback Robertson gets off to the races. Never had the chance to score. He's a little bit too slow, but really showing the strength on that one. I don't know if there's anything that they could have done to stop that run. We'll try a little read option. It's going to be a keeper for Derek Bentley, and he's going to get popped. But again, five yards of play is, I mean, at a minimum, very good. Setting up to pass here, a little play action. Not sure if Maurice Tate's ready to throw an open ball. So we're just going to <laughs> get hit as we're throwing. Thankways, incomplete. They played that pretty well. I was waiting for RJ to try to extend his route, but it just never happened. So in a tough spot, it looks like they want to bring pressure. Could be really, really good on the slip screen. We get the pass off. RJ's got it with blockers in front of him. And the blocks are monumental, and he's going to score. 37 yards. Oh, my gosh. The linemen doing everything for us on that play. All I had to do was hold forward on the thumbstick, and that's our second touchdown of the game. That one is best-case scenario when you call the slip screen. You hope that it goes that way every single time. And we got a little bit lucky as now gunning down the field. I don't know. It's time for the defense. They've only given up 16 yards. If they force another three and out, Ohio State might be out of it in the first quarter. Kind of banking on a run on this first down. It looks like it's going to be handed off a counter. And guess who's there? Napoleon Sandcastle dropping Jefferson for a loss of three. We have never called his name that much in a game especially just in the first quarter. Getting it done, second and 13, expecting them to pass. They hand it off and up the middle. I expected that to be a run to the outside. I got tricked. Jefferson gets 20 yards. That's going to allow the Buckeyes to get their first down of the game, and they will step back to throw. I'm kind of burned. Logan, decent open field tackle. No. Man, Mike Martin fighting for the extra yards. Gets eight. All of a sudden, the Buckeyes are in a really, really strong spot as if they go to the air here, we are definitely in trouble. Sandcastle coming on the blitz. Can he get to the quarterback? He pulls him down, and he's going to continue this amazing first quarter with a sack. Dialed up the pressure at the absolute perfect time, and that's going to make it a very difficult third down. But they're going to get it. Oh, uh, the shallow curl route. You know, we were running a cover six, and we were, were on aggressive zones, but nobody covering that. That's just the way things go sometimes, though. Uh, trying to hope for the best. Stepping up. They're looking deep. No, over the middle they go to Ryan Hamilton. Good first down, and that should end our first quarter. 14-0. Ohio State putting together a bit of a drive here. Then feels like they got stunned early. Kind of came out of the days on this drive, but... We've shown some signs of being able to get these guys off the field. Second and four. They're going to step back, looking to pass. Quarterback all the time in the world, and Whitaker drops it. It's a pick six if he holds on. So what can we do on this third and four to try and get the stop? Expecting a pass. And it's going to be Whitaker finally getting an interception. He's got a couple of blocks. A terrible spin move, though. Oh, my gosh. It's been like 10 deflections in a row for Chris, but he finally gets one for us. So the Buckeyes were starting to put together a good drive for the first time, and the strong safety decides it's time to actually get one. That was a terrible triple option. Had the pitch open, but just thought that I could get around Chris Ferris. Instead, it's uh, second and 13 as we'll step back to pass from under the center, rolling outside the pocket. I don't see anybody. I still don't see anything, but he just got to get rid of it. The coverage there was just way too good, and it's third and really, really long. 
That is just not uh, a good drive to start with so far for Maurice. Stepping back, looking to throw. I'm going check down. And Brian Curtis bails us out. Oh my gosh, some strong running to convert that third down. There were a couple of guys that maybe we could have stood in the pocket and tried to make throws towards that first down line, but I wasn't confident as Chris Rutger comes in motion on the jet sweep, jukes out the safety and gets nine. That's his second and one now across midfield for the third time this game. Stepping back, looking to throw. A could be open. Y is going to be wide open. If we could just get it there, it's Chris Rucker. He's getting a block downfield from Jeff Fontenot, and it's a huge 49-yard touchdown. Oh, the blocking downfield is the absolute difference maker in this game. It's going to be 21-0. And, oh, man, well on our way to earn a lot of XP in this one. Wind now on our back on these kickoffs. Probably won't expect to see crazy big returns. Didn't get all of that one, though. So even with the nine mile an hours at our back, they're going to be able to bring it out of the end zone and get to the 25. Hold the block, get the rock is definitely going to be the motto today as we will be looking to reward Jeff Fontenot for his blocking. Try to give him uh, a good passing attempt or, you know, target him a couple extra times. Defense, can't quite figure it out on that one. A little draw play works for Jefferson. We're going to bring some pressure here. This is really, really risky. Chris Whitaker coming off of the edge. Strong safety, can't get to the quarterback, but we still get pressure and force him to throw it away. And we're not done with the pressure yet. Second and 10, trying to bring five. Logan can't get off the blocking. Whitaker can't get there. Sandcastle gets held up, and it's down to London to get the stop. That was a really good time to run that one to the edge. The blocking absolutely beautiful from ohio state there first and 10 fullback in the formation here this one's going to be a handoff cut back inside looked like he could have gone to the edge mike martin gets five yards as ohio state is probably in field goal range at this point kind of desperately hoping that they go to the air and we can get a stop that way second and five looks like it's going to be a handoff but no it's a read option quarterback keeps it he's going to take one shot not fumble the ball and pick up 17 well, let's bring the pressure on this one. Could see us getting absolutely torched, but I can't allow them to just continue to run the ball. Stepping back to throw. I was late seeing Hamilton open, but he fumbles it. He fumbles it into the end zone. Oh, we had multiple chances to pick that one up, but it just rolls into the end zone. Ohio State gets lucky and picks it up. So close to that one being free, although, yeah, that's just a clean fumble. No chance to challenge that that's a tough way to give up your first touchdown really was hoping for a shutout there but uh, 316 left in the half we should be able to extend the lead rj fielding this kickoff and can't quite stay on his feet but gets out to almost the 35 just can't help but think how big it would have been to come up with the fumble in the end zone as jeff fontenot kind of streaking here we could be looking deep for the man who set the big block for the touchdown, throwing up the 50-50 ball, and that one's just not thrown far enough. Demarcus Latimer gets the deflection. I was late throwing that one, and also uh, Jeff just didn't stop running, so nothing to do there. Maurice Tate keeping it on the read option. S tried to slide down, took a little bit of a shot, and third and five, tried to catch him off guard with a hurry up here. Just kind of feels like a spot where we could pick up something big. As, man, Fontenot was open, right bumper was open, and right bumper is probably no longer open, but Stone comes down with it through the contact. That was a stupid throw to make, but I got absolutely bailed out. No reason that that should have been a first down as I'm trying to do something with Derek Bentley. I don't know how that worked for five yards. Just going to keep looking to throw. Second and five, Fontenot on the curl route. That's picked off. Yep. Uh, saw the linebacker coming over right as I hit the button. Got too greedy, trying to force throws. And, uh, well, the, they're going to hold on to those every single time, I think. Game where we should be up 28 to nothing, uh, as far as I'm concerned. And we have really shot ourselves in the foot there. Expecting passing a lot on this drive. They will go play action, open it up. Left the running back open, but they drop it off to Steven Morrison and get nine yards as the clock will move. Buckeyes let a few seconds burn off the clock and then decided to take the timeout as there's now 2.01 left. I want the ball back. I want to score again. We do get the ball to start the third quarter, so it wouldn't be the end of the world as I'm honestly trying to get the strip there. Chris Jefferson gets six yards. Probably expect to see the hurry up. 
And I'm just, I don't know, I'm going to try to use her Smith a lot on this drive to try and get pressure on the quarterback. I want a chance for another turnover. I don't know if we've won the turnover differential in any recent games. As, oh man, Sandcastle came close to maybe jumping the route there. Allen gives him a second and six near midfield as they will step back. Pressure on the quarterback and Smith gets the sack. That puts him on 15 on the year. And I'm going to take a timeout. It's third and 12. We know it's going to be a pass. It could be a slip screen, but we know they'll go to the air, and that is so important to try and guard properly. Pressure could get to this quarterback. Somebody could get open, or, yeah, there's the sack. We take the second timeout because it's fourth and 17. Just send RJ back there. A minute and 17 to work with is definitely enough time for us to score some points. Who knows exactly what type of points, a touchdown or field goal, but it's anything as good as... <laughs> I was trying to get a little too tricky with it with RJ. Ended up running backwards. Just a one-yard gain on the punt return. Now, I can't throw an interception here, but I'd be lying if I said we weren't throwing a forward vert. Uh, <laughs> seems like it could be foolish, but that's just kind of the way that I'm playing right now as A could have come right open. Right bumper. There it is. RJ Rivera getting a block downfield as well cutting it inside picking up some more blocks and rj rivera is gonna score diving tackles not enough 211 passing yards already on the half for maurice tate as he's found the end zone for the third time in this game the blocking downfield it's literally given us three touchdowns and that's gonna make it 28 7 with 56 seconds left in the half it's like a little bit unfair uh, how good that wheel route has been, especially with RJ Rivera. Just the speed to kind of get away from everything. <laughs> oh my gosh, London just, I don't know, battered and bruised Jason Hawley there. So Ohio State down 21, 53 seconds and two timeouts to work with. Do they go for it? There's going to step back to pass. And they're throwing a deep bomb and it's picked off by Devin Royal. This is exactly what I was hoping. He's going to have a chance at a really good return. He's got the corner couple of receivers to beat step out of bounds 41 seconds inside the red zone we're taking over from the 13 and a half yard line this is absolutely a thing of beauty right bumper was wide open still could be considered wide open but why do that when you can just run into the end zone with maurice tate there's a flag on the ground this is going to be a clipping that's brutal well, to say I'm conflicted would be an understatement because it was uh, Jeff Fontenot getting called for that one. I don't know. I guess uh, we'll call it even. Great run from RJ Rivera on the counter. We got to go in the hurry up as the clock is ticking down to 25. Just get to the line and snap the ball as quick as we can. Looking to get outside the pocket. RJ Rivera is wide open over the middle and he's into the end zone. Just like that. That was an incredibly quick 14 points. 35 to 7. I might be able to trick Ohio State into going for a kick six as well, or maybe they throw up another interception. Just imagine for a second if they hadn't uh, recovered that uh, fumble in the end zone. Just where we could potentially be. As we'll let them recover that near midfield with 12 seconds and two timeouts. And here's the thing. They have a nine mile an hour wind coming at their heads. Uh, I just kind of feel like we can get some pressure here. Maybe force another mistake. Smith hits the quarterback and Green dropped an interception. Oh, it almost worked out perfectly. That is exactly what I was talking about, but we can't quite get there. Nine seconds now from the 45. It's going to be a screen. Some sort of mid-screen. We get the sack. Uh, they took a timeout as well. Third and 22. Uh, you can't blame Ohio State. Season kind of on the line on a, a play like this. But with third and a mile, I'm taking the timeout. I'm going to force them to punt it away. Fourth and 30. I mean, RJ Rivera with three seconds to go in the half. He's done it before. Oh my gosh, could he do it again? If we can pick up the blocks. I saw Pancake out on this edge, and that's actually going to hurt us. There's a flag down. Uh, this is probably not going to give us an extra down. Probably a clipping. Second clipping of the day to end the half. Man, we gave it a shot. Not a great one. Napoleon Sandcastle gets called. I can't be too mad. People trying their hardest to spring that extra little bit of, bleh, extra little bit of blocking for the uh, the halftime stunner. But as we go into the locker rooms, it's 35-7. to 7. Just laying the woodwork on these guys. The Buckeyes not feeling too good. Wouldn't be surprised to see the stands start to empty out here at the half. As who's going to want to watch their team get obliterated at home? 
especially by a team that was in the MAC a couple years ago. We get the ball to start the third quarter, expecting it to be 42 to seven uh, after the first drive. And man, this one is looking really, really good. We're in a good spot. The question is, can we finish it? Well, I guess we'll find out real quickly. Just see what RJ can do. If Jody Gentry gives him a good block on the edge there, which he's given him a great block. RJ Rivera off to the races. One man to beat. 38 gets him down. But it's a 68-yard return. And that could be a really, really quick touchdown for the offense. I don't know if this is going to be a smart play or a really stupid play, but we're going... Well, we were going to try to go with a flea flicker. <laughs> but they got to Derek Bentley before he could pitch it back, so it's a loss of two. It's definitely uh, an interesting way to run that play. Not one you would expect to see often. Stepping back, continuing to look to throw. X could be wide open. It's Jeff Fontenot. Can we get him his touchdown? No, he can't come up with it. Just thrown a little bit too short. Just waited, knowing that there was no safety, but he didn't have the chance to get free. So it's third and 12, and we'll have to look for a, a tough throw. That's picked off. Or just really poorly thrown and run towards. Well, fourth and 12. Uh, I guess we will try to do something here. I don't know if we're in a field goal type of range. X could be coming open. That's a tough throw. Jody Gentry catches it. Plenty of space makes him and miss it. He scores. Oh my gosh, the big plays all over the field. I thought that was picked off when I threw it. I didn't think Maurice could get it there. And then the little shake and bake into the end zone. That is not at all how I expected that opening drive to go. I said it would be quick, but this is what, like 48 seconds and uh, just a couple of yards? Uh, fourth down conversion? I have no idea. Defense, by the way, five sacks, two interceptions and has only give up, given up 100 yards so far in this game. So if you're wondering how that's going for us, I'd say pretty well. Smith trying to bring pressure, gets hit on the quarterback, and Trent Dickens catches it for a gain of three. Buckeyes just coming out in these five wide sets early, which probably makes sense. Uh, oh, I got stuck on Clinton Whitfield, so we'll see what we can do. That's a wide open pass over the middle. And I don't know if we're going to be able to run the man coverage here. As bad as the Buckeyes have been playing so far today, it just kind of seems like, I don't know, we they they have the athletes. We can't really take it for granted. This one, a draw play up the middle. We tackle them at the line. They are in field goal range, but they would be stupid to take a field goal. We'll see. Can we get the stop? Last time they were down here, I think it was another interception. This time, Whitaker gets the tackle, but Sean Porter holds on to it. He made contact almost immediately, but... It's just not enough as we will try a little cover six here. I certainly do not feel confident on this one. Need to get pressure on the quarterback. It's a man wide open. He catches it, but he's short of the line again. It'll be fourth and one. I imagine they go for it, but we didn't give it up yet. And this is going to be incredibly dangerous, but a chance for the defense to get off the field, bringing pressure on this fourth down. They step back to throw. Quarterback has a man wide open. That's going to be a touchdown. You know, I just kind of figured they might try to run it. Had to try to bring the pressure. I don't mind giving up a touchdown if it means we can get the ball in our offense's hands. Man, 314 left in the third, and we have a chance to just continue to increase this lead. Uh, I feel like I said increase pretty weird there. RJ has no blocking. Nothing available to him there. I think every single one of our drives has ended in a touchdown or an interception so who knows what will happen here probably one of those two results waiting for the late pitch we get it out to rj rivera i don't know if he'll pick up the block oh and it would have been monumental if he did but 27 yards on the triple option is nothing to be upset about and we're looking to go to the air first intent stepping back waiting 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 maybe throwing J jody gentry open and he holds on to it through the contact we have over 350 yards of total offense already what can we do here? Play action outside the pocket. Just going to dump it off. Give it to RJ Rivera. He cuts it inside. Cuts it back to the outside. And he was a broken tackle away from a touchdown. You got to feel bad for the Buckeyes. That uh, we've realized that we needed the XP. Because otherwise I probably would have burned clock for most of the second half. Just trying to stay healthy. RJ Rivera has some back spasms there. Honestly could be good. Because he'll be able to come back in when the defense gets really tired. Get an audible stone to a curl route, expecting to throw it to him. The timing, he's there, and he gets into the end zone. Had to go for the risky dive. School record now tied for passing touchdowns in a game at six. 
as Maurice State, man, last week I thought was an incredible game from him. This week it's even better. If we get the chance, we're going to drop 69 on these guys, 100%. 49 to 14. And you know, the shame of it is that, oh gosh, Napoleon continued to do well. The shame of it is, uh, I feel like we could have shut him out, but things just didn't quite go our way on a couple of plays. Really curious how uh, Ohio State reacts to what's been happening in this game. Are they going to just keep going for it? What's the deal? As uh, they will step back to pass on first down, trying to wait. Somebody's going to be open, and it's the running back, but he threw it late. Now he's got a convoy, though. Oh, man. That was a weird one. We kind of had one guy, uh, uh, like, somehow accidentally covering two on that play. First and 10. Again, they step back, looking to throw quarterback all the time in the world. Over the middle, he's got a guy. It's Chris Whitaker getting beaten. And Devin Royal has to stop the touchdown. All of a sudden, it feels like our defense can't do much of anything. And they have anybody open at any time. This would be a good spot for them to run the football. I don't necessarily expect it, but second and in inches, they will step back to throw once again. And, you know, we made up a change. We switched back to the dime package, and it might have worked. I think just getting that extra defensive back onto the field when it's almost certain that they're going to be passing is really, really big as... Third and nine, they'll step back, looking to throw. Quarterback could have it picked off, and Pope drops it. Oh, that could have been our third interception of the game. Yeah, I don't know about this. They do have the wind at their back. But fourth and nine, a long field goal attempt here. What is this, uh, like a 50-something yarder? Looks like it's good, and no, it's fielded at the back of the end zone by Jody Gentry. If he can get to the corner, he might have a chance to kick six. <laughs> Probably would have been better off letting that one hit the ground, but now I guess the offense has more room to pick up some free yards. Hopefully those words don't come back to bite me. I said free yards. I don't think anything's going to be free in this game as we will step back looking to throw. Got to get outside the pocket. Y could be open. X could be open. Somebody could be open. Or we could just have Maurice State scramble with the football. I got to be careful not to fumble. The one thing with Maurice is... Uh, He's definitely going to be breathing heavy as he's on fire. So something good can happen. Stepping back on the play action. Right bumper and A were going to be coming open, but just didn't quite have enough time. That's a big sack for Ohio State. Second and long, trying to run back to get into position to get one more play out of this third quarter. I don't feel comfortable. Comfor confident? Comfortable? Words are hard. Why is open? It's incomplete. There's a flag down. Oh, that's going to be a roughing the passer in Maurice Tate. No, it's a holding, but Maurice was a little bit slow to get up. So end of the uh, third quarter. It's going to be second and 30, <laughs> and we might have a backup quarterback coming in. But it is 49 to 14, and we are still looking for three touchdowns to get to that 69. Uh, one quarter to play. We'll see if we can do it. This is maybe worst case scenario. Albert Johnson, Derek Bentley in our backfield for this fourth quarter on second and 29. Albert's got to keep it, but man, he has no blocking to work with. The fact that he might have gotten positive yards there is a miracle to me. And again, with these sliders, uh, Albert can't throw deep downfield. I mean, normally I don't think he could, but for sure right now he can't. So we need some really good blocking or some really strong running on that slip screen. And we get neither, and it's fourth and 18. We're going to have to kick this one away. Didn't even have a real chance to think about that one. As Thompson could come out at the, with the wind at his back. Hoping for a really, really good bounce on this punt. Just needs something to squeeze past the return, man. It's flying downfield inside the 30. Fielded. I, I literally am zero for 100 on stopping the guy when he turns around there. I just, <laughs> I'm not good at that. It's not popping up. The injury for Maury State, just a bruised sternum. So thankfully, we don't have to worry too much. It's a shame, though, because he was definitely setting some records today. One more passing touchdown could have been phenomenal for him. But unfortunately, it is first and 10. And uh, we'll see what these guys can do. Stepping back to throw. Pressure maybe getting to the quarterback. There's a huge sack. They'll lose 10 yards on that one. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't hoping for just some sort of defensive touchdown because I think that's going to be our best way to score. Is, oh, Smith's going to get a big sack. It's third and 25. We have seen some really impressive stuff today. Smith already has four sacks or three sacks on the game. I'm hoping we can make it four here with a little user on third and 25. Hopefully we can do something all the time in the world though. Quarterback gets rid of it, finds a man, but I mean, he's well short of the line to gain. They're going to bring the pump formation out and Jody Gentry is going to be back to return. 430 total yards for us to their 209. 
We'll look to increase that a little bit here as we just need some good blocking. And you just never know what these players can do. I feel like we're pancaking guys out on the edge a little bit too much as Gentry gets to about midfield. Here's the thing, 347. I still want to score 69 if we can. We don't have many opportunities to go absolutely buck wild in uh, picking up yards and Albert Johnson, 27 yards on the carry. He is not fast, that is huge. If it's Maurice Tate in on that play, it's a touchdown. It's a real shame that our starting QB is injured, but Albert can definitely get it done in spots like this. Derek Bentley breaks a tackle and he'll get a first down. And this is definitely a risk. We're going to go look at a play action pass. You never know what Albert's going to do in this situation. Just rolling outside the pocket. X is wide open. He gets in there. Chris Rucker diving into the end zone. 56 to 14. Even the backups getting involved now. I've said it time and time again how teams have disrespected us. I'm not going to be mad if Ohio State continues to try and score because we are not letting off the gas pedal. Uh, and, you know, next year they get a, a pass as well because we're doing them dirty right now. Full back and a half back in in this I formation. Wouldn't be surprised if they run it. It's an option. QB keeps it. Only gets a yard out of the play and takes a hit. This guy's been sacked so many times. He's averaging negative 4.4 yards per carry. <laughs> Feel bad for the guy. Just a little bit, though. This one's going to be a run out towards the edge. Lewis, huge job slowing him down. My gosh, how did Chris Jefferson get seven yards there? Man, Ohio State's just one of nine on third downs. I was unaware of that as we're bringing pressure. 100% trying to stop him on this one, expecting this one to be a run. I would be surprised if they passed it. It's a handoff, Martin. Wow. How many bodies have to hit this guy before we can get the tackle? That is so brutal, mostly just because they're kind of in a clock burn situation at this point. They will step back, looking to throw on this one, and quarterback is... Oh, hit as he's throwing. That one was almost picked off. I just feel bad for Matthews, man. He's been just getting pummeled in the backfield all game long. No respite the entire game. This one's going to be handed off, and Jefferson continuing to break tackles. We finally bring him down. He gains a yard, though. Gotta say, third and nine, two minutes left in the game. I'm not certain we'll have the opportunity to score two more times. I think that that one drive that we got stopped is going to be brutal. This is a fourth down. I got to take a timeout here. Thank goodness the pump formation comes out as Chris Rutger now is back to return. Down to the third string return, man. Just letting anybody give a shot at it. Uh, definitely a fieldable ball if he can get a block. This is going to be deadly. He breaks the first tackle, stays on his feet. <laughs> the fact that he got four yards is a miracle there. Almost was able to make something out of that. It's just not quite the case as Albert Johnson, I don't know if he's going to be able to make these throws that we're expecting of him, but stepping back, X, it's Chris Rutger holding on to that one through the contact. Who would have thought that Albert could come in and throw for three of three and a touchdown and maybe lead this team down to some sort of miracle drive? Oh. Stone was wide open, but I just it's hard for me to remember how slow Albert Johnson is at times. Second and 10 after the first incompletion, but if we really want to say anything about it, it's my fault over the middle. Tough throw, Stone can't come down with it. Ooh, Oliver Clark got a hand in there, but that was close to being six. Guess we'll just see what we can do on this third and 10. I am looking for Derek Bentley over the middle, and the running back has it. He's short of the line to gain, but we're going for it. Let's see what we can do. The Man, most of these names in at the wide receiver spots are completely unrecognizable to me. I don't see anybody open, but I do see Albert Johnson <laughs> running, scrambling for the first down. Question is, can we just get it done? Because I'm not feeling all that confident. A over the middle is open. Tyler holds on to it through the contact, stays on his feet. That'll stop the clock with just under a minute. <laughs> this is... Something else, that's for sure. I don't know exactly if, what we can do with the amount of time left, but... Oh, well, that's going to hurt. Albert Johnson, the strip sack. Hines trips up the lineman, so we get the stop, but that that really hurts. Well, maybe this comes back in our favor. Kind of felt like he was down. That's hard to tell. I don't know if, if they can overturn this one. Um... Kind of seems like the leg, or maybe the elbow gets down. Oh, so we keep the football. Play reversed. It's going to be a long one, but a chance, I guess. 
Worst part about this is the clock is moving. Second and 20, 40 seconds left. Not a whole lot of time to work with at this point. Trying to wait. Why over the middle? That's going to be picked off. <laughs> the, we have all our backups and none of our wide receivers are like really, really good now. Kind of feel bad for Albert because, uh, I mean, what can you do at this point? Trying to send Chris Rutger deep. I think that's who we're going to just toss one up for. See if he can come down with it. And it's picked off. <laughs> Well, you can't expect a whole lot different. Oh, could this be a pick six? The blocking is really, really good. Trying to strip the football, but he's tackled out of bounds with 24 seconds left. You know, once uh, Maurice got injured, I think the dreams of the 69 kind of went out the window, but we gave it a valiant effort. So like I said, now I guess I can't be mad if Ohio State just wants to throw up a pass here. Not expecting it, but again, just can't be angry. Decent job, stop the run. Only giving up two yards. I assume that'll be the last play of the game. And Ohio State not burning the clock, so we might see one more. Inside 10 seconds, clock burning. And they're going to go to the air. And he's going to get hit on bounce, so I guess we will see one more play. They seem uh, very wishy-washy, back and forth on what they want to do here. Calling this a run up the middle, third and three. Two seconds on the clock. Smith gets the diving tackle add to his stats for this season who knows maybe that's the tackle that helps win him some awards clock hits zeros and we absolutely decimated rj rivera did phenomenal shamey got injured thankfully just a minor injury but at the end of this one what was it 56 to 14 just obliterated these guys nothing they could do to stop us <sighs> i don't know i really want that 69 maybe next week though Whoops, I accidentally went through all the player of the game stuff. Um, well, 56 to 14, we dominated them. 513 yards of total offense to their 237. We had 163 rushing yards to their 35. 350 passing yards to their 202. Even on the turnover battle, which is really, really disappointing, but we were definitely in a really good spot. And man, they had 192 kick return yards just because they returned so many kickoffs. Uh, but just... Man, things looking really, 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 really good for us. I guess RJ Rivera was our offensive player of the game. Uh, four receptions for 130 yards, three touchdowns, all the runs that he did. But man, he did technically get some really nice catches. A couple of them off of screens. And then uh, Morse, six receptions for 92 yards and a touchdown. And then Morse is their player of the game. So we can only see just one, I guess. But uh, that's the way it goes. Uh, Albert didn't do so hot, but Maurice, a 298.1 quarterback rating is pretty dang solid. I guess we can just advance the week. You can see right now we are at 12,000 XP. So we got 2,000 out of the 6,000 we needed. We might get some more in between weeks here, but this next week against Indiana, we are going to be foot on the gas from the gate. We do get Keith Bryson, the 79 overall right guard committed to the team. Normally, that's an incredible pickup. These days, it's a pretty solid pickup. You know, I'm not screaming to the uh, from the rooftops because it's not like in the 90s or high 80s, but he's going to be a very solid part of this team. And we get locked out by some lower overall players, but that's not the end of the world. And XP wise, I'm really curious how much extra we got there up to 12,500. So... Uh, less than 4,000 to go now until we can get that level up and hopefully stay alive with some really big recruits. We move up to number six in the nation at seven and one. We play a four and three Indiana, who is a lower overall team than us. We beat them in every statistical category except for the turnover differential and the rush offense where they're running it an average of eight yards more per game. But uh, man we're looking really good their offense is scoring less than 20 points a game and our defense is allowing certainly fewer than that so things are looking really really good in the top 25 i think it was florida maybe getting the win over georgia uh no georgia getting the win over florida uh auburn did unfortunately beat the teal boys so they jumped back into the number one spot and let's see next week clemson syracuse is going to be pretty big we've got uh there's the loss for florida any other losses tennessee at number 11 lost and coastal and ohio state so we had uh 11 12 and 13 all losing last week nothing too crazy it looks like coming up this week purdue also dropping out which was one of uh the teams that beat ohio state so that makes the buckeyes look even worse than they already are but 
a dominating win for us in the coaches poll we are sitting at sixth in the media poll we're still sitting at five and then the bcs slash college football playoff poll we're also at a six some other big news after that game rj rivera is into the heisman shortlist he's fourth uh he's had a pretty solid season nothing like spectacular only 565 yards rushing and six rushing touchdowns but He's got uh, 340 yards uh, receiving, five receiving touchdowns, and then all of the kick return accolades. As a true freshman, I would say the fact that he's even on this board is a really good sign of things to come. So that is really, really good news for us. I'm excited for next week. We have a bunch more points to put into recruiting. I think our recruiting is starting to kick off. Uh, man, this team is starting to get really, really scary. The only shame of it is that we weren't able to get the 69, but we will do it in a future episode. Unfortunately, that's going to have to do it for this one. If you enjoyed this video, please go down and subscribe if you want to see more content like this and hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Both of those things do a tremendous job of helping the channel out. After that, you can head down to the description where you can find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. It's also links to my Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok, as well as our community Discord, and of course the college football revamp mod if you're trying to get it for yourself. All of that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Gray Boys, and wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. We'll see you later. Adios. Special thanks to our tier three members, Durham Finch, Avery Binkley, and Warmaster777.